Thank you for being with us. I'm Mary Yanez, Director of the Senior Adult Program at the El Paso Community College. And of course, this is Mature Living. We have some wonderful things happening at the Community College in 2019. And so we want to talk about it. I've invited a couple of special guests. They're professors of the college. Uh, Vanessa Camacho, welcome. Hello. Come, Vanessa. Thank you. You're a history professor here at the college. Yes, at Trans Mountain Campus. Super. And you brought Tony. Antonio. Yes. <laughs> Antonio Rodarte, librarian at the Rio Grande Campus. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very good. We're going to be talking about celebrations, anniversaries. You know, UTEP celebrated its 100th anniversary. We all are interrelated uh, as far as community college, UTEP students. And so I graduated from community college and UTEP, mm -hmm. so you know, we're, we're kind of interlocked yes. here. But now we're coming right behind with the 50th anniversary of the El Paso Community College, uh, which was opened its doors in 1969. Would you believe it? 50 years ago mm -hmm. almost. So I'm gonna start with uh, Antonio. He's mm -hmm. gonna share a little bit. I'd like uh, to know, um, of course, the purpose and what you think about the main idea of having this 50th anniversary celebration. Some of the ideas or the purpose of the 50th anniversary incorporate the, the, the recognition of the many uh, achievements by individuals or by the institution. Yes. Another idea is to celebrate the many accomplishments by individuals, institutions, everybody involved with the college. We, we want to highlight, the committee wants to highlight, the whole celebration will highlight uh, contributions uh, by the college to the students, yes. the impact that the college has on the economy locally and nationwide. And, and what I say nationwide is because our, our, our students, our faculty, our staff go elsewhere and they contribute to the economies wherever they happen to serve And we them. all know somebody very successful that, that graduated all from the college. All over the country, oh my yes, gosh. yes. And it, many times it was their first start. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And, and uh, also uh, we're celebrating the, the, um, uh, how the college is improving lives for everyone who is who's touched by the university, who's, who visited with us, has studied here, has worked here and lives are affected, and, 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 and for the most part, it's an improvement to life. It's yes. a growth in life, and, and, and they're able to improve their, their home situation, their family situation, and their environment. And that, that's some of the, the ideas we're gonna be focusing on. Uh, we also wanna remember the many individuals who have contributed to the, to the college over the many years. And also, we wanna recognize present and past leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, presidents, board members, all sorts of important people to the college who have come through and some still here after so many years and uh, some who go be beyond and, and make contributions elsewhere. Those are some of the ideas and focuses for the celebration. Awesome, and they say education is the key to success. And Absolutely. I think you've just mentioned a lot of Absolutely. ways that families are successful economically, yes. Yes. Uh, professionally. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, I wanna mention that we're starting in 2018 we're starting, and we're supposed to be starting early because we're, we have a lot of work to do. Yes. And so I, I just want to know about our committee that mm -hmm. I belong, mm -hmm. I belong to you all. <laughs> <laughs> and Vanessa, you're leading, uh, the spearheading the, the committee, which is the History Archive Subcommittee work. Yes. Tell us what, uh, what you're all going to be doing. We have, we have a lot of projects planned, and there are uh, projects that are trying to hit uh, kind of every area of the college. So we have projects we're planning um, to encourage instructors to uh, involve their students in commemorating the college. So that's one aspect. Um, we're also t uh, going to conduct oral history interviews so we can have faculty and staff and students um, uh, talk about their experiences mm -hmm. with the EPCC and reflect if they have a long history like you do yes, or, uh, or a short history <laughs> but how EPCC that's has wonderful. impacted their lives. Um, we're uh, hoping to uh, work with the El Paso Museum of History to have a community exhibit on EPCC. So if, we, if they accept our proposal, then we can um, be uh, present there. Um, we're also talking about how to celebrate and commemorate on every campus because EPCC isn't just one campus. There That's are right. uh, many campuses and, and every campus is different and unique and has a unique history. So we wanna reflect that. Um, and maybe the most exciting for me as, as a public historian is we're working, uh, Tony and I, we're the co-chairs of the History, sub, uh, History Archive Subcommittee. Um, we're planning to put together an archive uh, for EPCC along with our other wonderful committee members who are really putting a lot of planning and effort into this process. Yes, and, and, and we'll talk about how the community can help mm -hmm. uh, because they can help us. We can't do it all oh, by no, ourselves. No, no. I started in 1973 mm -hmm. working with the institution 
as a supervisor of a duplicating center, the first duplicating center oh, that wow. the college uh -huh. needed for the faculty, by yeah, the way. Yeah. And so I've got a, I have so many wonderful uh -huh. stories to share. Uh, but we also want to, to know, uh, Antonio is a historian, a librarian, uh, you know how important uh, archives are and, mm -hmm. and what are going to ha happen with the memorabilia that the community will bring to you? What's going to happen to those? With the initial uh, call for, for materials, information, uh, documents, whatever, went out to everyone who's a current employee or faculty member with the college. The idea was that we wanted to hear back from individuals who had uh, materials, information, Photos memorabilia, even, huh? anything, mm -hmm. any format that we potentially could use. So we wanted a list of what they potentially had and that we could perhaps use for this, mm -hmm. for this whole celebration. Now, as we're getting calls and we're getting materials, uh, some uh, ideas submitted to us, and we are inviting individuals to bring in certain materials in. We will be e going through the materials, evaluating them, mm -hmm. and sorting through them because some materials we will be able to use for the actual preparation for the celebration. Mm -hmm. as, as Vanessa mentioned, we're, we're doing a work with a museum, the History Museum, and there'll be exhibits and there'll be uh, displays and things set up. So we want memorabilia, physical items, mm -hmm. but we're also going through the uh, information and sorting down materials that we will eventually incorporate in, in, into developing an archive. Mm -hmm. Now that would be perhaps a longer term project because these materials will have to be uh, obviously evaluated, sorted, and returned. Ca categorized, <laughs> digitized, uh, digitized, digitized or scanned. Oh. Some we will retain if, if that's mm -hmm. what the idea they is want. from, from the, whoever is presenting the information or return to the mm -hmm. original mm -hmm. And I just imagine the first graduating class, somebody's got photos of that first graduating right. class and I have a feeling they're my students, <laughs> uh, senior citizens uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, that graduated in 1969 or 70, you know, right. early years. Uh, we'd love to hear from those seniors. Right. Uh, that's why the senior adult program is so important because we, mm -hmm. we, we reach out to these graduates that uh, are now or, elders. Or it doesn't have to be something from a significant moment. It could be maybe you have an old paper that you wrote. Maybe you have a, a something from uh, an instructor who wrote something to you or I mean I have I have cards that students gave me but I also think of when I first started on tenure track five years ago and my dean over my office door they put a big welcome sign and I kept that because oh. it was meaningful for me as the start of my 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 career here at EPCC so it could range it doesn't have to be necessarily just a special occasion item but if there's something that reflects your time at EPCC something that that is meaningful and that's what we want to hear and about we're going to do, uh, do the digital wall I think they want little yes, uh, vignettes uh, or, or the mini interviews sure, or snippets absolutely. of, of yeah. the college we call ourselves the college of the community mm -hmm, we are mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. And uh, we've always maintained that uh, over the years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That has ingrained in my mm -hmm. in my mind and in my heart yes. that the community college is part of the community. It is the community. Yes. So I love that about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a little bit time left, and uh, um, if people are interested in contacting you or anything else that I may have missed mm -hmm. or not mm -hmm. asked, would you mention it now too? Maybe some um, and some of the committee members. Right. Well, we have um, a larger committee of about 30 um, uh, EPCC staff, a faculty, um, student representation. So we're we're all divided up into subcommittees. We have student engagement. We have publicity. We, there's a gala that's going to be planned. There's public events. There's there's so many parts to this commemoration. So just kind of keep your ears open and listen when we start making announcements about it. But for our um, history, sub and I wanted to ask oh. Antonio. Uh, to to give a phone number. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so for, for our committee. The, yeah. the, the contact information will be uh, directed at me, Antonio Rodarte. My number is 831-4058. There's a secondary person at the Rio Grande campus, the head librarian, Gail Kristen Sanchez. Her number is 831-4458. Mm -hmm. We are receiving calls, we're receiving emails, and we are making the, con the, the contact with these individuals who are presenting us with information that they want to share with us. Yes. And there was some comment that I had thought about earlier. What was it, Vanessa, that I wanted to stress to our viewership? That if they want to contribute, if they mm -hmm. want to be a part of this celebration, 50 years mm -hmm. of EPCC, they can be a part of it. Definitely. Absolutely, yes. You may want to yes. give that pitch. Yes, so uh, you know, we can't do it ourselves yes. and so we're we are reaching out to the community and just as we said keep your ears open keep your eyes open when you start to hear our calls 
for the community to start contributing to please take that step. And, and we also want to thank our co-chairs of the larger anniversary committee, Lisa Elliott and Carrie Moe, because they have done fantastic leadership in organizing this and making sure that it's a commemoration that truly reflects everything APCC does. And we want to thank our faculty members that came to take time from their job, from the classroom, from the library. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you. Oh, wow. I'm so excited. I really think that this is going to work for celebrating our 50th anniversary here at the college. And we'll be right back with more Mature Living guests. Well, thank you for staying with us. We want to introduce you to a form of wellness. And uh, I've invited Pilar uh, Luna, who is one of our instructors of line dance. Thank you, Pilar, for taking time to be here. We're going to talk all so about much. how great you are and how popular your line dance classes are, are becoming. And you brought a wonderful student Excellent, that has been yes. with the senior adult program, Emily Borrego, who, who has been line dancing for um, umpteen years. Thank yes. you for being with us. Thank you, Mary. Emily, we'll talk a little bit about you of how, how you got interested in yes. line dance. I also want to say that I'm wearing, I know Mother's Day's over, but I'm still wearing my white flower uh, to commemorate my mom. Uh, the tradition is that we wear a white flower if our mom has passed, and mm -hmm. you can wear a red flower, a red corsage, if your mom's still alive. Mm -hmm. So if you want to wear it all year round, that's fine with us. But we did wear it during Mother's Day last week. Uh, Emily, tell me a little bit about your classes. I know you've been line dancing for years under Trish and some of our other instructors, Trish Laskowski. So I'm sorry, um, no. Pilar. Okay. Yes, I started about 13 years ago with Trish precisely, and I loved it so much that I learned the dances right away and I wanted to learn more. So uh, she recommended that I go to the advanced group, and then I was there for a long, long time. And then I started doing some uh, teaching, uh, volunteer teaching, to get some experience. And uh, then uh, you called me. Absolutely. <laughs> and now I'm teaching with the PCC, and I just love it. You know, one of the interesting things, uh, Emily, is that all of our line dancing classes close like within an hour. I think maybe even minutes of when the registration starts. They just line up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Registration starts at 7.30. And yeah. they called you and told you by... Yeah. By 8.15, classes were, were full. booked. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And I think probably the best example is, is Emily to tell us why you always took line dancing with the Senior Doll Program. Okay. Um, I love dancing to begin with. Uh, I was a working mom, and when I retired, I heard about the community college classes line dance. It's been a wonderful outlet for me, uh, mentally and physically, yes. the exercise, the joy of dance, music. It has kept me limber, more mobile, because for my age, mentally and physically alert, it's a wonderful outlet for stress. We go there and we just just follow the music and the dances and the energy of our instructor. It's wonderful. And if I, I may say, Emily is 86 years old. Look at yes. this woman. I mean, her <laughs> attitude. And still her, active. Her love for life. The, mm -hmm. and, and, and line dancing has meant a lot. I saw her dance for two or three hours yes. the other day. Yes. And I couldn't do one or two. I should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> but it is a form of wellness, isn't it? It is. Well? It builds up our stamina, yes, our yes. circulation, self-esteem. Yes, all that. I have a little touch of arthritis, an old knee injury, but it's kept me limber because of the, the exercise, yes. yes it's it's yes. a positive way to It is a positive to way live yes. with dance. Yes. And, in, and, and to see you, the memory, uh, Pilar, they have to memorize these yes. steps. Tell me how so it helps also our... Yes, our, our it's, our a, uh, it's a physical activity uh, because like she says, it's exercise for you, but it's a fun exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a mental activity because you learn steps and you have to learn the sequence of steps, uh, being that there's a variety of music and knowing that they're seniors. Uh, we try to uh, gear to their, what they can do. So there's from beginning to advanced. Yes. 
So awesome. as, as an instructor, we take it as we see our students. If they can learn more, we go a little bit more advanced. If not, you know, but it certainly keeps them going and it's a very social aspect as well. Yes, it is. Uh, and so you've met a lot of good yes, friends. Yes, it's wonderful fellowship. I know yes. the younger seniors tell me they want to be like me when they grow up. <laughs> I want to so, be like you. Yes. I want to be like Emily yes. before right. I go when, the, when I grow up. Yes, the beautiful mm -hmm. thing too is that the music, we dance to different types, types of music. Of music. Yes. Latin, modern, Pops, it's, country. It's everything. And it, we started back when I started it was mostly country, country. Mm -hmm. and as yes, we've right. gone more it's grown it's grown it's a In wonderful popularity. program I yes. recommend it and and it used to be called country western line dance right yes and it's no more not anymore what now do you we, put in we as have, far as your mix we have latin mm -hmm. we have pop we have uh, contemporary we have waltz yes. and, and the more importantly is that we don't need a partner Yes, a lot that's of us. A lot of us seniors, yes. you know, who lose our spouse, yes. or you know, whatever circumstances, you don't need a partner. It's that's just true. It's amazing. It's true. I think yes. there must have been like a hundred dancing line dancers on that floor when uh, that oh, party yes. that I went uh -huh. to that party. Cecilia Reyes yes. coordinated. Yes. And yes. so yes. tell me about no partners. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, um, like Pilar said, um, you can dance everything like mm -hmm. I have a husband but he does two-step and a little bit of um, corridas and and that's about it so I love to dance everything I always have so I can join the ladies and we dance cumbias and whatever and you mentioned <laughs> you got this from your mom from yes. your mother speaking yes. of Yes. Last week was Mother's Day, so. Yes, yes, my mother loved to dance, and uh, she loved music, fellowship, and, and I did. I, I got my love of dance for her, and it's wonderful. The benefits are, are amazing. Well, yes. our classes are always full. Yes. They're the biggest classes, yes. the ones that get uh, that close up really quickly. Uh, but I also want to mention the other instructors, Trish sure. Laskowski, you yes. mentioned already, Joe Rodriguez, yes. uh, he's teaching with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to have Joe teach a whole bunch of men, yes. Uh, yes, to take his class, challenge the men here yes. in El Paso yes. to, to uh, take li uh, line dance with us and, mm -hmm. and do those Latin dances and, and be active. And, you know, sometimes the ladies get up to dance and the gentlemen stay behind. It's because yes. they haven't been taught. Mm -hmm. Once they get that self-confidence, they'll be performing. As a matter of fact, you all performed recently yes, at the uh, EPCC right. uh, Lights Yes, we did a 30-minute presentation. Yes. Uh -huh. And so did you, did you know, it was you were performing on stage. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it's correct. Wonderful. And it's wonderful. Correct. We gave them a little variety of everything, a little rock, a little yes. bachata, some country. So it was wonderful. That's great. Yes. We are going to be having yes. a summer class that Trish is going to teach at Bassett. Mm -hmm. So you all yeah. can join in. The community can join in to learn a few steps. Great. And we want to thank you for, for being with us. A last comments, uh, Emily, that you want to mention mm -hmm. yes. about your life in line dance. Um, only that it's been so beneficial. I cannot stress enough how mentally, um, physically, it, well-being, stress reliever. It, it, you get out there and you just forget. Yeah. You forget and you just go with the music. You feel the energy. It's a happy, healthy activity. And we want to celebrate your 87th birthday soon. So we'll yes. Oh, yes. In May. In May. <laughs> wow, in might, May. We might get together for lunch. Yes. That? that sounds <laughs> that wonderful. wonderful. And thank you, yes. Pilar, for being here and for teaching, being such a wonderful teacher. Well, thank you. She talked very you highly know, it's a great you. idea on that best thing yes. people that walk in and don't know anything about line dancing it's Get a great a form of uh, learning about it okay so we'll go join yes. us <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you so much thank for you being for here. having and us we'll be back with thank more you, guests uh, here on mature living like these wonderful ladies thank, thank you, you. <laughs> well thank you for staying with us we're almost done with our show but we have two more guests to introduce you to and a topic that is so important in this community and for all of us, and that is uh, the representatives from the El Paso Diabetes Association are here. I've invited Esther Martinez, who is a health educator uh, with the Diabetes Association, and thank you, Terry, also. Terry Sanchez, who is a registered nurse, 
You're also the uh, certified uh, diabetes educator. Correct. Did yes. I get that right? Yes, yes you did. <laughs> well, thank you for staying with us. I do want to say that we've developed a partnership, a new partnership, and I know that's what you do, Esther, is go around and, and, and open some doors and sometimes knock them down, down so that we can reach people all over the community to be able to take care of their themselves and the illnesses that we get. Isn't it rampant here in El Paso diabetes? And why is that? Tell me a little bit about your work there at the association. Well, we see people who have, of course, who have diabetes and they come to our diabetes self-management classes. It's an eight hour course um, and it's really comprehensive talking all about you know, diabetes. Uh, we do have classes for women who have gestational diabetes. Um, we do classes out in the community, and like you said, we're partnering with like the housing authority, mm -hmm. um, some of the uh, retirement homes, places like that to reach those people. Um, we have people come in to do glucose checks, uh, A1C checks. So we're really trying to you know catch people early on that have you know either pre-diabetes and of course those people who have diabetes to improve Very to improve good. their health. And your role at Terry as a nurse. Uh, what do you find and what do you do there at the uh, at the association? Well, um, I mainly assist with giving education both in-house and sometimes out in the community doing um, in addition to what Esther mentioned we also do presentations to different schools and different organs organizations um, agencies um, we do some training um, also um, you know in different schools so so we do a, a lot of different things we have a, a, a healthy living um, program where we actually um, do some uh, we partner with a, a culinary chef and so what we do is we're um, kind of showing people how to make healthy food healthier choices That's we talk food. about healthy eating and so we do that once a month to try to make sure that you know we we touch with um, people who have um, diabetes and also to help prevent you had mentioned earlier how diabetes is a big problem for us yes. um, the the national numbers are that about 9.4 percent of people in the United States have diabetes right now wow. which is about 30 million people Oh my goodness. 86 million people have pre-diabetes right now. So that's a big number of people who potentially could develop diabetes within the next two to 10 years. And it, it's, it's really a, a disease, a silent disease. It, it can be um, many times, um, and that's, that's the problem is, is that our, our body kind of gets adjusted or used to the, you know, the blood glucose levels getting higher and higher. And so it can, somebody can have had diabetes for months or even years without even really knowing it. And then there's some uh, youth, uh, uh, some young people. Right. Yep. Starts very young. Yes, those kids have the type one. And so we do have a camp and our camp is gonna be in July this year. And it's gonna be a week long camp for kids from the ages of five to 13. So we're really excited about that. Um, and where is that gonna be? If it's gonna be at our, at the, at the association the at our office, oh, okay. uh -huh. and we'll Automatics. mention where the office is as well, and your yeah. phone number at the very end. But that's nice to have a youth camp. Yeah, for and education. It, it's a day camp, so day you know, camp. eight to four. But but it does help. Um, you know, it's targeted specifically for for children with diabetes. Yes. Um, type one and, and type two, unfortunately, is now on the rise with with our children as well. Yes, and when they walk through your doors there at the uh, Diabetes Association, oh, I might as well mention the address while we're at it. 3641 Maddox. Maddox, yes, it's near uh, Montana. Montana Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that near uh, the golf course? Or yes. across, yes. across yes. the street? Across <laughs> the street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> super, super. Um, and, and the work that you do is when they come through your doors, do, do they say, I think I have diabetes, or my doctor said I have diabetes, or my test, and then you start putting them in classes? Well, some people who come in there, th you know, thinking that well, they have symptoms or they have a family history, so they want to have their glucose checked or their A1C checked. Yeah. And then sometimes we do get referrals from doctors and the, those people who have diabetes and they want them to get, you know, education. Because again, the more that you know, the better off you are that, you, you know, you can take care of your diabetes better. Yes. H what are some of the myths or misunderstandings, misinformation we get about diabetes, uh, Terry? Um, well, you know, one of the first myths that we have is is that um, if your blood glucose is, is elevated, that it always has to center around what you're eating, okay. okay? And that's not necessarily always true. There's a lot of things that can actually affect your blood glucose reading. 
Um, stress can be a big derailer of your blood sugar, some medications, any kind of illness or infection. So it's not just all about what you're eating. As a matter of fact, not eating can actually affect your blood sugar level and cause it to go oh, up yeah. or down. So, so that's one of the things that it's really important for people to understand because a lot of times um, what happens is, is that they get scolded, they get told you're eating all the wrong things. Um, you know, a lot of people think that that's what, you know, is th there's so many myths about, you know, the, the food part of it, you know, and there's no such thing as a diabetic diet, not yeah. anymore. We teach patients how to eat healthy, oh, uh, a little bit of everything that's in good. moderation. What about pre-diabetes, Esther? Pre-diabetes is, again, what did you say? Oh, yes. A great number of people have prediabetes. 86 but million. 86 million. But if you can, pre you can prevent getting diabetes if you have prediabetes. So if you eat well, exercise, um, you can, you know, prevent it from turning into diabetes. And you know, one of the things that we, we hear about the amputations, the blindness, tell me about the, those kinds of, is that, are those myths that everybody that has diabetes is going to, well, well, the thing is, is that it's not true that diabetes itself can cause it. What happens is, is that high blood sugar levels is what causes that. Okay. So you can avoid those complications if you are able to keep your sugars within that target range where it's not damaging your body. So it's not true that somebody who has diabetes has to end up with these complications. Um, unfortunately, people who have those have not really ever been given the information or, or the tools to be able to keep that sugar yeah. where it needs to be. If, is it hereditary? Um, it can be, that's one of the risk factors. Okay. Now there's one thing they, they told me is that if you have had a scare or a trauma, that you're gonna get diabetes. Is that a true thing? <laughs> and, and that's not really <laughs> true. Uh, sometimes you know you might get scared or have a shock and so your body's going to react to those things and most times of course you already have diabetes but okay. you don't know it and then those things that happen to you that shock or that fright just causes those um, symptoms to be more apparent and what about insulin we haven't talked about insulin uh, what do they say about insulin and what is a myth well, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of people who actually think that insulin is bad for you, that it causes problems. I've had a lot of people tell me that they're afraid to go on insulin because they're thinking that it's going to cause their eyes to fail or their kidneys to fail because they had family members who, once they started insulin, then went into kidney failure. But what they need to understand is, is that that family member, unfortunately, waited too long to get that to get started on that insulin yeah. the damage had already been done and yes. they were going to already you know have these problems the insulin just happened to you know be a coincidence if you will that they happened to start it that week before wow. but insulin is something that your body makes insulin is something that your body needs so therefore it's not necessarily a bad thing for you it's yeah. actually something that can help keep your sugars very well controlled. And you know, these are all the kinds of things that they learn in, in education through classes and through groups. Absolutely. Well, thank you, and we'll be joining together to offer some classes through the college, and I'm also gonna be offering some nutrition, healthy nutrition classes with a chef, uh, and so we're looking forward to seeing more of you. Sounds thank you good. for having thank us you very so much. much. And the class starts June 5th through August 21st. It's a Tuesday from 9.30 to 11.30, and it's going to take place at the community college, the Administrative Service Center in the B Building. Give us a call. I'm going to give you my number, and I guess we'll see you all next week. But you can call to find out about this class and how to register at 831-7801. Thank you so much, and thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you all next week.